So I don't know if it has to do with the full moon, if it has to do with the tides, I don't know if it has to do with Christmas music being played before Thanksgiving's even done, but in just the last month, I've been having a lot of conversations about rates and tuning. And I don't mean PID tuning because I'm going to throw something out there now. I'm going to get people that are going to flat out tell me I'm full of it and they completely disagree. But for a lot of you guys, what I'm seeing is you have not even dialed in your rates yet. So PID tuning is going to do almost nothing for you. So this just the tip is going to be a little bit more than the tip. It's going to be a little bit more involved, but I'm still going to make it as clear and to the point as I can. So let's get to it. Here's the thing with rates. Rates determine how when you are moving your sticks around, Whatever feels natural to you, however much you deflect the sticks when certain things happen or however you um, react under certain situations, it's about making it to where whatever comes out of your fingers translates to your quad very naturally. And that's where rates come in. And so we're going to be primarily looking at three different rates. RC rate, super rate, and RC Expo. Because if you guys haven't gotten those even close to where you need to be, nothing else that you want to talk about, nothing else you want to do even really matters. So let's get to it. So first things first, let's go ahead and get plugged in um, to our quad on our computer and let's fire up Betaflight. Now I'm going to head straight over into the PID tuning tab. All right, and all we're going to talk about for right now today is this RC rate, super rate, and RC expo. That's it. Now, I want you for the time being to ignore this graph over here. I don't want you to look at that graph. I don't want you to pay any mind to it. I don't want you to worry about the shape of the lines, okay? Because honestly, it doesn't matter. I don't feel that these lines and curves are a very good visual representation of how beta flight's actually going to feel because that graph output is relative to all of those settings and every time you change it to a certain point it it adjusts so that everything fits into that area and people have a hard time scaling with that so don't don't pay any mind to that right now now when you start tuning rates the whole point of this is to make the quads movements feel natural to your reactions and movements on the sticks, right? And all of that starts with RC rate. And so right here we have an RC rate for roll and pitch and for yaw. So I went ahead and just switched to rate profile too so you can see what the beta flight defaults are out of the box. Now there's some merit to what they're, they're doing here but the long and short is that for most people an RC rate of one is too fast your movements on the stick are just going to be far too twitchy. And I'm sure as we talk through some of this, you're either going to realize that you are one of those twitchy people or that you know a twitchy person. And it has nothing to do with their sticks themselves or the way they move their fingers. It has everything to do with the fact that they have not adjusted their rates to be natural. Now, for most people, what I will recommend is that they take an RC rate of somewhere between 0.7 and 0.75 okay so let's go ahead and turn this way down here let's, let's go to 0.7 that's where I like mine okay now I probably like my rates just a little bit slower than most other people but again that's the personal side of this right now, if you go less than that, that's fine. If you like more than that, that's fine. But here's what I want you to do. Especially if you've never done this before, this is your exercise. You're going to set your RC rate to somewhere between 0 0.7 and 0 0.75 as a foundation. I mean, if you want to see what 0.1 feels like, maybe you've been flying it all along just because you didn't know any better. But if it's been a while, go ahead and reset it to one and then take it out. Don't even fly the whole pack. Just fly a couple laps around something and then park your quad because chances are you're going to want to change it. 
and then come in and make that RC rate 0.7, okay, or 0.75 or somewhere in that range. Now, I want you to leave Expo to nothing and leave Super Rate, let me see, it's 400 degrees per second, it's fine where it is. This is not where we're going to end up, but this is going to help me illustrate exactly what you're doing here. Go ahead and save this. And then run out and fly it again. And what you should notice is that as you deflect that, and you can see what I'm doing here. As I move the sticks, you can see what's happening there on the screen. The amount that I'm moving my sticks is, is equating to a certain amount of degrees uh, per second deflection. And what that means is that's how fast the quad is going to rotate. If you can think of it like a circle. If a circle is 360 degrees, how many degrees per second at that point on the stick is the quad going to move? Now, you can't visualize that, I'm sure. I can't visualize that. If you can, cool. But I find it's not a great, great indicator of what you're seeing and what you're going to feel. But if you scroll down on the screen a little bit, you can see how the quad is oriented here, okay? And so you can get an idea that, well, when I hit my roll, it's going to, you know, it's going to move a certain amount. And it, when I hit my pitch, it's going to hit a certain amount. When I hit my yaw, it's going to rotate a certain amount. Now, I want you to stay away from the end points on your stick. Don't go all the way to the end, okay? We're not worried about those movements yet. What I want you to think about as you're going ahead and moving this around and feeling it is, this is the center of the stick, okay? This is where you're going to live most of your FPV life piloting the aircraft. This is where 90 plus percent of your movements are going to be, not at the outward edges. You're going to go there, you know, here and there for certain tricks and maneuvers. But as a rule for flying, there's some area here right throughout the middle of your stick that you're going to use the most. And most people are going to stick right to that very center. So what I want you to do when you go out, I just want you to fly laps. I don't want you to try doing tricks or maneuvers or any of that yet. I just want you to fly. I want you to fly around a building or through some, some buildings, okay? Stick to an open spot for now because you're playing and you don't want to get too carried away being in tight spaces just yet. And I just want you to fly. Do that and come back. So at this point, if you're following along, you've gone out, taken a couple laps around your house or something, and you've come back, and initially you have thoughts, okay? Now, I'm headed in one of three primary places, either, ooh, that feels really good right where it's at, okay? Or you're going, ah, it's just too slow, just too slow. But if you're one of those people, I want you to make sure that you weren't jumping out to the ends of your sticks. We're not tricking yet, we're just flying. All right, no maneuvers, just flight. So ask yourself that question again, how did it feel? If it was too slow, you're gonna put your RC rate up just a little bit. Now you don't have to go far. Maybe start with five point increments. Save it, run out and try it again. And once it gets to where things are feeling pretty good, I mean, you're gonna know, you don't have to think about this. Once you're moving and you feel like the quad is one-to-one -one doing what your brain expects it to do based on what your fingers are doing, you know you're in the right place. Now, likewise, if you still feel like it's a little fast, you're going to turn RC rate down a little bit. Don't worry about the numbers and what your favorite pilot uses and what somebody else had on theirs. This is you. We're setting your rates. So make some adjustments if you need to make adjustments and then... Go out and fly it again, and do that until this feels pretty good, okay? Not in just the very, very center of the stick, but just good in general. As you've done this, for the most part, the sticks probably feel pretty good. And now where I want you to focus is what we call the RC Expo, okay? All of our focus for right now is going to be the center of the stick, not the outsides. Now, as you're out moving around... You know, you have your, your major movements you use like when you're turning. That's why I wanted you to fly around an object, right? Fly around a house, fly down the street, turn around and come back. Because these are your primary movements, that level of movement, right? What that means is that you're not in that center 15% of the stick. You're actually more like out in the 15 to 50%, somewhere in there, 
okay? And so now that that's feeling pretty good, I want you to think about the way the quad flies just when you're in the very center of the stick. I don't want you to move it more than, God, I'm trying to think of a good way to equate this, right? But roll and pitch, for instance, I don't want this thing moving more than like this. Now, this area right in here is generally what we refer to as micro corrections. That's where you've come around a turn and now you're just, you're just correcting course just a little bit. Now, this is where most people have not taken the time to define their rates, okay? As you're going around your major object and you come out of it, you're trying to make a micro correction. You're trying to move just a little bit. And the, the movements, and the movements right in the very center of that stick, maybe they feel a little slow. Normally, that's not the case. If anything, they feel just a little bit fast, okay? And we're going to correct that with RC Expo. Now, what I want you to do, don't jump this way up. There are some people that believe in copious amounts of Expo. I'm going to tell you to use it as sparingly as possible, all right? Go ahead and put on just 10 points or so. Boop. Just like that. Save it. Go out and fly. See if it feels better. And you're going to repeat that and come back in. And if that still feels, you know, just a little jittery, take it to point two. Now, I'm going to tell you, if you go above... 30 or 40 points of RC Expo, you probably should look at changing your RC rate, okay? Now, I know you're looking at this and going, well, Josh, I, I just saw your rates, and your rates are kind of breaking your own rule right here, and you're not wrong, but I've spent a lot of time dialing in my rates to be specific for my person, for my reactions, for my brain, for my sticks and my quads, keeping in mind the props that I prefer to run, the motors and KVs that I prefer to run, like it's all part of the package, okay? Everything that I just mentioned really affects the way your quad's going to react when you're moving those sticks. So now we've got that like 75% of the middle parts of those sticks defined. And hopefully we've got them reacting in a way that feels really, really natural to us. All right. Now we're going to address the ends of those sticks because this is where we're able to pull off certain maneuvers and different things and really get that quad to react. Okay. But we have to keep in mind that we want it to be natural. Now what that means is when some people do a flip in their mind, when they do this, that's a full flip quad has spun all the way around that roll axis or all the way around that pitch axis, doesn't matter. Boop. For some people, it's a little more, okay? Now, some of this has to do with how fast your finger goes over there as well and how fast it returns. I'm gonna tell you, if you've never done this, to err in the side of too slow versus too fast. Everybody seems to have this common goal to get to like 1200 degrees of deflection per second or faster, like it's gonna make them a pro or something. Personally, I find that the more degrees per second of rotation somebody has at the ends of their sticks, the more I hate how it translates into their videos. Now, I know that's very subjective. Some people don't care. I want to be able to see the things happening in the videos. I actually want this thing to, to take some time, right? Now, for me, that's part of control. I'm big on control. I always want to be in perfect control of this quad. Okay, not just 90% of the time, I want to be in control. And that's really this exercise that we're going through. Now, chances are, as you take that super rate and you start jacking it up, you're going to be more and more out of control as time goes on. So, again, I'm not telling you that what you're going to do is wrong. What I'm telling you to do if you haven't gone through this exercise before is to start low and work your way high. Now, I'm going to tell you to start... For most people, 400 degrees, 500 degrees per second, you really don't want to go any lower than that because that's where this quad just feels like it's going to take way too long to do anything, right? So pick your starting place, though, 450, 500 degrees per second. I can tell you most likely you're going to want to go higher than that. Not straight to 1,200 degrees per second. 
and then take it out, and then I want you to do some general flying, and then just do a flip, do a roll. Do it a couple times, right? See if see how that timing comes to you. Now, you're not just going to get this the first time, all right? Play with it. This is not something, you're not going to run two packs, dial in your rate, and boom, that's it, you're going to be pro now. This is going to take time, especially if you've never done it. Anybody who's gone through this exercise before knows that once you get this 90, 95% there today over the cross of over the course of half a dozen packs or so, that you're going to go back here and there and you're going to tweak this just a little. Do a flip, do a roll, decide if it feels too slow or fast, come in and adjust it. But while you're doing this, you're not changing your RC Expo and you're not changing your RC rate. You're only changing your super rate, all right? Because you want those middle of those sticks to stay exactly where they're at. The whole point of this exercise is that as you're flying your quad and you're doing things, that you are never surprised by how your quad reacts, okay? If you ever go to do something or you hesitate to do something or you're not sure about going to full stick because, oh, it looks really awesome when I do it, but I only do it 300 feet in the air because it always surprises me and I don't know exactly where it's going to end up. You are exactly who I've been talking to this entire time. So get these things dialed in. Don't touch your pids, all right? Let's be real. There are people that have this notion that you can take your pids and adjust them and make your quad fly like it's on rails. That has almost nothing to do with pid tuning and almost everything to do with rate tuning. How is that so, you ask? Because people who look like they're flying on rails are people who are in control of their quad at all times, who when you watch them fly, it looks like their quad is just going exactly where they want it to go. And that's what's giving that impression that this thing is locked in on a track. And that has everything to do with flight style and flight characteristics and almost nothing to do anymore with PID tuning. So play with those rates. Go out, give them a couple days, make some minor adjustments here and there where you need to, but try to wrap this thing up. I mean, you're going to find it doesn't take weeks to get this underway. This is something you can do in a day or two, and it's going to make a world of difference as you go out and fly. So Now, once you've got pitch and roll wrapped up, I want you to go ahead and do the same thing with y'all. Now, y'all is a little different because throttle management's kind of everything, right? You know, I mean, it really determines how well you're able to fly low, through things, under things. And my personal experience with y'all is that it took me longer to figure out how I liked y'all than pitch and roll. And what I ended up finding personally was that I like my y'all rates at least doubled as what I like my roll and my pitch and roll. And that's because as I'm flying around, I don't want to have to deflect this a ton side to side because I can feel my, my throttle possibly changing with that too. So I want to move this a lot less. I spend no time way out at the ends of my sticks when it comes to y'all because I feel like I have a ton of throttle, um, throttle play when I do. So I'm still working on my y'all rates a little bit. But that's kind of where I'm at. I also like my y'all to be a little more linear. I don't like it as much expo on it. I don't like as much super rate. I really like it to be, to have a much more linear response. And that's where you'll just have to find your happy place. So go ahead and apply these concepts. Start with roll and pitch, go to y'all. And then from there, we'll talk about some other things. On that note, guys, just remember to always fly safe, okay? Fly smart and happy crashing.